All right, we are all set. I'd like to start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Chuck, would you mind leading us? Harmony, can we do a verification of quorum, please? Yes. Director Alex Hook is absent. Director Van Bleet? Here. Director Doherty? Here. Director Tim Cook? President Griffiths? Here. Four present, one absent, quorum met. Thank you very much. We'll go on to the approval of the minutes for our November 1st meeting. Do I hear a motion? Motion. There's Second. A all in favor of approving the November 1st minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. And now we go on to public official comments. And it looks like our president, Darcy Burke, is here from Elsinore Valley Municipal Water District. Thank you, President Griffiths, board, staff, presidents. First, I have some very sad news to share with you. We lost one of our board members last month unexpectedly, Phil Williams. He'd served on the board for almost 24 years, born and raised in Lake Elsinore, um, very, my opinion, too young to pass, 62. So at Thursday's meeting, we will we'll announce our process for filling that vacancy. Um, I'm, I will have to report back on what that process will be like and that person will have to live in um, division two and we will take it from there. So very unexpected um, and really left a, a really big hole, not only on the dais, but within um, our staff. Many of them had only worked with Phil. So unfortunately I don't have a lot of other good news to go with that. Um, right after our last meeting, we were informed as a retail agency of Metropolitan Water District of Southern California that the United States Bureau of Reclamation was looking to cut back California's allocation of Colorado River water by 75%. So with our mismanagement of our state water project, uh, initial allocation is zero and 25% of our Colorado River and 20 million people, depending on it, we're going to have to make some serious decisions on what we do. A lot of that's going to be asking our community to get involved in letting the governor know that the way they're managing the water system in California is no longer acceptable, that people are important and so is food. So hopefully I'll be able to bring some information on what some of those initiatives are. Um, I'm one person that advocates for a balanced stool. We have three legs, the environment, people, and ag. And anytime you have out of balance, the stool doesn't stand. And that's kind of where we are right now. Over the next five years, we're expecting to have about $700 million in capital improvement projects at the Water District. Some of those are mandated. Some of those came through grant money that we weren't expecting. Um, and a lot of them is just when you have enough pipe to go from here to Denver, it's a lot of repair and replacement. So I'm going to be the first one to tell you bad news up front. I think it would probably be coming would be another rate increase. And I know people are like, I already pay so much for water. And I just want to remind you that you pay for water service. We buy it, we treat it, we deliver it. And I think um, the more that people can understand what that process is like, is helpful. I will also tell you that you don't appreciate a sewage system until it doesn't work. So I would much rather be proactive and know that it's important to our community not only have a full lake, which I don't know how much longer I can guarantee that, but also to have a safe and reliable community that you want people to move here, that we have a good quality of life, that our city has the water necessary to make the improvements our city does as well. So I'm sure I'll have more information about that coming forward. Uh, President Griffiths, I think all of you actually have attended a, a tour of the water district and we look to make those open to the public at least twice a year, which I think is really important. You need to come see for yourself. I wanna thank the sheriff and Captain Rails especially 
his, he was able to coordinate with the sheriff's dive team a exercise on the North Ski Lake to remove some vehicles that have been submerged there for a long time. Unfortunately, we only got one out. So there was an attempt for two others, but they were so old and I rotted that literally when they put the floats on, only the top parts came of the car up. So, and too deeply submerged. So I'm hoping the captain will send that team back out. I think it's really important that our residents understand that didn't cost us anything. It didn't cost the water district anything. It didn't cost the PO anything. It didn't cost the city anything. And hopefully the sheriff's dive team got some really good, good practice. So, um, over the next few months, we'll figure out when there's another good time to come back and attempt to remove additional vehicles that have somehow landed there. The one they did pull out actually looked like uh, the Grinch's car. It was just covered in a beautiful green moss. And um, also it was a stolen vehicle. And so that means when they towed it away, it didn't cost us anything either. So although I don't want it there, now that it's out, it really is a win-win for all of us. And, it, and it's important. I'm hoping that in the next quarter, usually the first quarter of the year, we have a joint meeting between the city, the POA and the water district. And hopefully by then we'll have a new director appointed and everyone can meet that individual. I also wanna let you know that there'll be a new chairman at Metropolitan Water District, which is extremely important. We are in some really tough times and we need some strong leadership. This individual, um, chairman elect Don Ortega, uh, actually comes from Fullerton, represents the city of San Fernando. That's a long story. Um, worked for Metropolitan previously in the beginning of his career, and I have known him for 25 years and an exceptional leader. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that that will actually help us as a retail agency. He needs to go fight for water and bring it here. And I think he needs to understand how important it is to, to the community. I think that's about all the good news I wanted to share this evening. I'm happy to take any questions. Oh, there is a mayor and water district breakfast uh, or coffee next Wednesday, the, I think that's the 14th at the country club at 7.30. I'm actually going to a Colorado River water users forum that day. So I won't be there, but Jeremy Smith, our mayor will be. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, President Burke for coming out always keeping us well informed. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. Are there any other public officials here? All right. Um, now we're going to go on to a presentation that I'm very excited about. Some of you may have heard that there was a fire on October 31st, a house fire in Canyon Lake and there was a gentleman driving by and he saw the fire. So instead of driving by or taking pictures on face and posting on Facebook and waiting, he went in and he saved the homeowner who was in there. And um, I always get excited on stuff like this. <laughs> Anyways, so instead of just coming out after saving her, he went in with a fire hose or excuse me, with a regular hose and started putting out the fire and hopefully he got in trouble from his wife on that. I don't know. All I know is I got a picture of him in a hospital gown letting me know because he also serves on our appeals committee and is fantastic at that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that I think is precious for all of us here. In 1999, he received the Medal of Valor from Los Angeles Police Department. And he was awarded the top cop and was presented an award by the president of the United States. So being a hero is not something new to him, but a lot of people don't do it. And I'm pleased to have you in Canyon Lake, absolutely. And your amazing wife who also made us dinner and appeals, but we'd like to, uh, and we thank you for that too. But we would like to present you with a recognition and I'd love to have the whole board come up for that and thank you.
I know. Can you be my neighbor? <laughs> And now we're gonna move on to member announcements. So reminder, we do this in the beginning. So if you still haven't filled out a card, please do so if you'd like to speak. We wanna make sure that you have your time um, and just bring it up to harmony. Each individual will have three minutes. Uh, please note that we cannot respond back, but we will certainly listen to you. And we appreciate everyone who comes out and lets us know what their concerns are. So um, with that, we'll start. Harmony, how many member comments do we have today? Um, we, we're doing an we're on member comments. We have four. Uh, we have announcements oh, first. Oh, I'm so, you know what? My apologies. Maybe I wolfed on my glasses. My apologies on that. That will be after it. So everyone has even more time to fill out those comment cards. Uh, we're gonna go to an announcement and I'd like to ask for Director Van Vliet, he has an announcement for us. You bet. We received a, uh, there was a proposal generated by uh, a walking group in Canyon Lake for to request permission to walk on the golf course cart paths. And so I wanna educate everyone, if you're not familiar with the process, the way this goes through is it was brought first to the Recreation Committee who, who uh, heard the idea and recommended they talk to the Greens Committee. And the Green Committee is made up of a number of our clubs, the Women's Club, the Women's Club, the TWG and, and the Niners Club. Uh, and so they listened for, <clears throat> to the presentation for about 35 minutes, heard, heard all, all perspectives on that. And then they were asked to provide their comments. <clears throat> and I wanna congratulate both parties on doing a very respectful and, and, and professional job of, of going through the due process. Um, the Green Committee <clears throat> then had an executive session where they met with our group and, and, and did a very thorough job of evaluating all the points and, and looking at the, the, the options and the, and the considerations associated with it. And, and then the, what, the way the process works is they provide their recommendations to, to the staff member, uh, which is Steve Snyder Operations. And he, he, the staff then provides it to the general manager who provides it to the board for, for evaluation and review. And so that's the process we go through whenever there's a, a proposal that's kind of put forward. Um, so today the board uh, got all of the information. We deliberated all the points that were brought up by the, the proposal, the original proposal from the walking group uh, and, and also what was provided by the green committee in terms of their, their, their thoughts. And, we, and so in executive session, we discussed it at length, considered all perspectives and we voted at, uh, during our executive session that at this point we are not able to allow any walking on the golf course for a number of reasons. Thank you, Bill, I appreciate that. And I apologize for skipping over. Now we're gonna move on to member comments and Harmony. Okay, and no other comments. I heard there was a few that were writing in. Okay, then we have four. Our first is Chuck Moreno. Chuck Moreno, 3846-330. Okay, I've lived here in Canyon Lake since about 2004. We've been through a lot of general managers since then. So we've made in the last, let's say five years, six years, we've made leaps, uh, leap years of uh, progress under um, Eric Kazakoff. And um, I don't know if he gets recognized enough um, for all that he's done for our community. And um, I really, really appreciate what you've done and the beautification that you've done here. Um, thank you. Just want to let you know. I would also like to say that our current board is probably the best board we have ever had. I voted for you to make sound decisions regarding our community. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. I know most of you personally, um, some more than others, but um, I think we've got a great group here and, uh, and we're moving on well. Okay. Okay, real reason I'm here. Okay, I'm here tonight to voice my opinion and opposition of stealing, I'm going to say that again, stealing more precious parking spaces just to add two more pickleball courts 
to the east port, okay? I'm gonna stop right here and I'm just gonna say, if we do this, we can't go back. Um, my example is if we look at the lodge here, the lodge parking lot, in around 1999, we added the two upper courts, which eliminated about 75 parking spots, okay? I don't know if you've been to the uh, um, Fiesta days, but they're getting quite large and now we're shuttling people in. And I don't think that's a great idea to sh have to shuttle people in. I don't wanna see the East Port go that route. Um, you know, I have nothing against pickleball. I think that sport is awesome for, um, you know, the older tennis people and whoever wants to play it. I know there's younger people playing it too. Um, I think activities are great for everybody. Okay. Um, like I said, I do not want to see the East Port turn into the Lodge parking lot. Okay. Um, for an example, um, last Sunday, we had a golf cart parade and a massive uh, get together in the Eastport parking lot. I mean, that place was stuffed and there, everybody was having a great time. Um, could you imagine if I went through there with some flyers and said, hey man, they wanna, they wanna take our parking lot and build pickleball courts here. Man, we'd have an angry mob going on over there or something, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so anyways, I just wanted, I, I wanted to bring that to your attention. I want you to think about it. I think there's a lot of other places that you could do that. You could build some pickleball courts if it really is that much needed. But in my eyes, we're taking parking space for eight, eight people. That's what we're doing. So thank you. That three minutes goes fast. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Chuck. Sorry, I was hitting wrong buttons on the phone. Thank you very much. Oh my God, I need to figure that out. Next is Travis Next. Montgomery. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Travis Montgomery, 3863010. For over 50 years, the POA board meetings have been allowed for board member for member comments on agenda items at the same time the item was before the board. Under the new administration, this board administration, this process changed six months ago, and members must now address agenda items during the member comment section of the agenda, which heretofore was reserved for non-agenda item comments. Current policy also limits member comments to three minutes which restri restricts the opportunity to comment in any detail on more than one agenda item. I don't know why the current board adopted this member limiting policy. Transparency includes openness and the current policy falls short on openness. It's almost as though the board doesn't wanna hear from members. You state the comment section will be limited to 30 minutes total. And the board reserves the right to limit this section of the meeting at any time they believe it's appropriate. Does that mean if you want, don't like what you're hearing, you can arbitrarily shorten the time? The comment section also states that the board is prohibited from discussing or taking action on items not on the agenda. That means if I'm speaking to an agenda item, you can discuss it with me. However, that also means you will be discussing it in advance of the item's actual presentation on the agenda. Tonight, you have 13 action items on your agenda. If I speak to item 13, you can discuss, discuss my concerns now, which isn't very efficient since the item has not even been presented to the board. Or you can try and remember what I said the at the time of the item's presentation which may be an hour or more later. Having been a member of this board, I'm well aware of the board members must put in long and hard uh, hours and, and many board meetings can last long hours. Unfortunately, that goes with the territory. It's called public service, not public avoidance. You can rest assured that this is one item that I will address with each board candidate as we enter the POA election cycle very soon. 
I hope the board will reassess its transparency and openness policy and return to allowing member comments at the time agenda items are presented to the board. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Thank you, Travis. Paul Herbert. Okay. So our last is Joe Kamashian. Good evening. And, uh, uh, the, my name is Joe Kamation, 3716, lot 124. Um, first off, I want to commend Bill and the board for taking action. It was kind of a surprise to hear that tonight. I didn't expect uh, there would be any statement or decision made on, on the walkers, but I, I commend the board for their due diligence and the Green Committee for theirs. And uh, I think the right decision was made for the benefit of the community. Um, my primary reason for to be here tonight is to talk about what Travis talked about. <clears throat> of the 13 items on the agenda this evening and other pertinent subjects, I have five topics that I'd like to address and you give me three minutes to cover all five topics. You also require that I raise my comments or concerns as much as one hour or more before they're actually discussed. So my comments can be ignored or forgotten, um, but certainly not considered at the time of your vote. I've been in this community for over 30 years, attended meetings regularly for over 20 years, and cannot recall any time when the board has restricted member comments on agenda items. Uh, it's always been Something that's been available is just part of the practice. And I can tell you from my experience, not only as a board member, but as a member in the audience, there's a lot of good points that are brought up by the uh, members when there are discussions and things that you know four or five people can't consider every time. So the input is generally beneficial, sometimes annoying, but generally beneficial. I'm not sure if this decision to eliminate the discussions at agenda items is a, lack, a way of censorship, a lack of transparency, or just wanting to shut the memberships out of the process. I think it's wrong and it needs to be changed. I believe the community should be heard on agenda items and plead with you to open agenda items to the member comments and restore the practice that has worked well for many years. That is my first topic, and I plead with you to consider that. While the Walker's decision has been made, and uh, I encourage, I want to encourage the Walkers to continue what they're doing. They're doing a good job. They're getting people out and exercising. Uh, this is uh, both from the golfers and, and uh, I'm sure from the board. This isn't a statement to the Walkers uh, in a negative way. It's it's just a statement for the betterment of the community. And I hope they can appreciate that. And I hope that they can work with the board and the FPC in the planning on the um, Evans Park, Outrigger Park development and incorporate a good walking area there. I think positive um, action by the... At three minutes? Huh? Okay, well... I got three more items. Okay, thank you. Um, so I would rather see the group do something positive in the community uh, instead of writing a petition and trying to force this down our throats on the election on the ballot. I think doing something positive in the community with uh, Evans Park and Outrigger Park would be much more beneficial for everybody. Um, tea time reservations, the board, board action item 8.6 calls for the correction of last month's vote that ignored the contribution from non-resident annual golf members. There are approximately 50 non-resident members that each spend over $3,000 annually or 150,000 collectively. That contributes to our golf course subsidy. 
They also support the country club restaurant and club activities. These are devoted members of the golf community and should not be treated as third class citizens. To give them last priority with tee time reservations was a disservice to their commitment to our golf course. I applaud Director Van Vliet for bringing this action uh, tonight and encourage the board members to recognize their contribution and vote in favor. Uh, the solar project, I'm excited to see that that's happening. It's a formality tonight, I understand that, but I just wanna thank everybody that was involved. Uh, we've had a number of boards, I guess this goes back three or four years, um, and I'm thrilled that it's finally coming to happen. And I got to say, talk about Eric and all he's done. He has spent a year and a half working with this project and seeing it through. And, and uh, he is a big reason, him and Steve Snyder in operations, a big reason that this thing's actually come into fruition. And I want to thank him for that. Appreciate it. And lastly, the median project, um, the joint effort of the staff and the committee process that will update our, beautify our community. I hope um, that decision goes well tonight too. Thank you and Merry Christmas. And thank you for the time. No other comments? Wow. All right, with that, there's no other comments, which is interesting and we'll go on. Uh, our consent agenda, is there any items from the consent agenda that any board member would like pulled? Nope. All right, do we have a motion on the consent agenda? So move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Thank you. We're gonna move on to our board action items. And we'll start with um, Harmony. Okay, thank you. Um, we just have one item to be added to next year's annual meeting of the members and election of directors. It's the housekeeping item of approving IRS authorization should the board decide to use that method of rolling over the excess income. Um, so we ask that the board approve the attached ballot measure to be included in the 2023 annual meeting of the members and election of directors ballot. Thank you, Harmony. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor of approving uh, the members and election of directors ballot measure, IRS authorization to roll over excess assessment income, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Thank you. We're gonna move on to Lynn. Yes, Mrs. President. Okay, uh, so last month at the November board meeting, staff proposed a revised committee charter for board consideration to disband the Fiesta Day Committee and create a special events committee. The board requested staff uh, provide detail of what's considered a CLPA special event and a list of the annual events the committee would be assisting with. So in, included in this modified uh, board action item, we did include the annual events uh, listed on here, Fiesta Day, Taco Tuesday, Movie Night, Maui Sunday, 9-11 Tribute, and uh, the Holiday Golf Cart Parade and Toy Drive. And then we also um, included the revised charter. Do you want me to go through the charter? No, you don't. Okay. Unless, does anyone need her to go through it? Okay. Nope. All right. So with that, is there a motion on this item? Motion to table. Do I have a second to table? Yeah, I'll second that. All right. All in favor of tabling the item, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Now we'll move on to Eric. 8.3. So this, um, this, 
agenda item pertains to our solar power purchase agreement. We executed this contract back on uh, April 5th, 2022, based on uh, a spending and contracting authority, which is a board approved policy, which um, gives me the power to execute certain contracts. Um, our vendor, um, Centrica, has asked that um, we ratify that my signature in open session and provide them minutes. We can't provide them minutes from executive session. So we're, we're ratifying um, my authority to sign that contract back in April. Um, and the company, um, the ent legal entity that the contract was entered into with is SCP 73 LLP. Um, it's an entity that was formed just for this power purchase agreement. Um, and that was dated, uh, I guess the open session was April 5th. It was executed on April 8th. And um, the vendor has just requested that the board ratify this. Uh, signa uh, physical impact is the same as the power purchase agreement, which was approved months ago. And um, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> hopefully everybody remembers that this is expected to save us um, several million dollars over the next 25 years. So I recommend that the board ratify my signature on the PPA contract with SCP 73 LLP executed on April 8, 2022, and also accept the finalized uh, easement agreement, um, which pertains to the three locations uh, that the solar arrays will be installed. Thanks. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent. Motion carried. Thank you. And now we have Susan, or someone going to read it for Susan? Would you like me to? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Uh, so the background on this is the Finance Committee has an opening for a committee member. The Finance Committee has following recommendations. Uh, Dale Welty to move from first alternate to the Finance Committee as a committee member. Recommended that the board accept the above changes and election of the finance committee recommendation effective immediately. Thank you, Lynn. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor of appointing Dale Welty to the finance committee as a member, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent. Motion carried. On to 8.5, Steve Schneider. Good evening. This is for uh, Can Lake Drive South median improvements. The Can Lake Drive South medians are needing repair and an updated look. The landscaping is bare. The large trees are uprooting the curbs and the street. We enlist a landscape architect having experience designing medians throughout California. After receiving the initial design, member committees were allowed to review and comment on what was proposed. This project includes tree, damaged curb and dirt removals, new plants, trees and uplighting mulch and rock, a new turn lane uh, to allow left turns onto Bluebird Drive, and new curbing to eliminate the uh, old mailbox turnout before Continental. This is not to be uh, confused with the uh, current mailbox turnout. I saw some comments that uh, there was some confusion there. And also this, uh, this addresses the uh, landscaping behind hole 12 and 13 T. The initial engineer's estimate was over $850,000. We were able to value out some items to try to reduce the cost. We issued an RFP in October. We received bids ranging from 630 to $1,007,000. Fiscal impact is $630,000 to, replace, to replace and repair the medians at the Canlake Drive South, plus a 8% contingency from the repair and replacement reserve fund. Staff requests the board of directors to approve the funding of $630,000 plus an 8% contingency from 02670. Thank you, Steve. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, discussion. Hey, I have a question, Steve. When was the last time we updated the medians? That last time we updated the medians? Mm -hmm. I believe they're original. 
I do have a comment. <laughs> so <clears throat> just just a couple of comments because I know there's been there has been some uh, a lot of discussion on on social media about it. I, I do want to commend you, you Steve, um, for this is another job where or our staff has done a good job of value engineering to save the community money, uh, like they did on on Sierra Park. Um, where they were able to, the bids came in a lot higher and they were able to work multiple bids together. So again, thanks for the hard work in doing that. You continue to do a great job for the community. Um, and I know this <clears throat> change is always hard. Change is, is difficult, but this is something that I think uh, does continue to, you know, uh, to improve our community and, and the look of our community when we, for all of us who are homeowners, you know, every so many years you have to repaint and, and do things. And I think this is, it's, it's been 54 years and it's, uh, while it is a big expense, <clears throat> we are, as a community, you've done a good job uh, in, in doing your diligence to minimize the cost um, as much as possible. So thanks. Any other discussion on it or discussion? I'm just not so positive this expense is worth the gain that we get here. Um, I think the project could be scaled down and still be a benefit to the community. Just an opinion. I just think the project can be scaled down with not as much work done and still be a benefit to the community. Okay, any other comments? To me, this is uh, about first impressions and we all know what those are. And when you drive into the main gate and see that 54 year old uh, median with the trees coming up, you all know what I'm talking about. It's, it really is a need of help. I was on a couple of committee meetings uh, leading up to the formation of the, the plans and the, and the bids. And I have to tell you, a lot of work went into this thing to keep the cost down. One thing you may not know is that we are purchasing the, the lighting, the uplighting, which is, substantial, is a substantial portion of this job. We're purchasing those ourselves directly from the, from the contractor, from the uh, su uh, supplier to save money. Uh, and so it's things like that and thought that went into this project. And though it's, it, it sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money, I think it's gonna be a great benefit for first impressions when people come into our community. Any other discussion? Nope, just wanna make sure. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and call for a vote all in favor of approving the project for the Canyon Lake Drive South of Median, it'd be 630,000 plus an 8% contingency from the reserve fund. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Three in favor, one opposed, one absent. Motion carried. Thank you. And then we'll go to 8.6, Director Van Vliet. In the last meeting, we, we did uh, address this, uh, this item where we changed the, the advanced tea time reservation. We, we increased it to 14 days for, um, for resident members, and, and we increased it to 10 days for resident non-golf members, but we, we left the resident member, let's see, non-resident members um, <clears throat> at, at seven days. Um, and, and I was one of the three who voted for that last time. Subsequently, I went in uh, and, and consulted our, our golf professional and asked him uh, about this. And, and I got some additional information about the, uh, the why we have the non-resident members and how much they provide for the course. Um, and the reason that we added the non-resident members is to help reduce the subsidy for the course. That was, it was deliberately put in to help reduce the amount that the golf course uh, is subsidized by the community and therefore impacting our dues. Um, it, it does it uh, with 50 members. It does, as mentioned earlier by one of the members, uh, it, it brings in an additional cost of $150,000. Pat felt that by doing this, we actually create a disincentive for, for them to do it. And so I'm proposing that and his proposal was, why don't we just keep them the same as residents as well and have 14 days for resident members and 10 days for everyone else. So that's the rationale for it and why I'd like to revisit this. Thank you. Uh, well, we need a motion. 
I move that we approve this. Do I have a second? So motion. make sure it's there a second. Motion dies for lack of second. Second. I will move on to 8.7, Amanda. So this is just for the Estates Committee chairperson appointment. Um, at the October open session board meeting, the board approved to revise the committee policy. Um, the board approved Tim Heider as the new chairperson and he kindly declined. So the Estates Committee is recommending that Dave Boley rem remain as chairperson. And we're recommending that the board approve Dave Bully to remain as chair. Thank you, Amanda. Do I hear a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Well, question. So, so Dave Gully is is willing to continue to stay on as the as a chairperson. Why why was it going to be replaced in the first case? He has been the chair for more than two years. So the new policy was encouraging movement with the chair position. And no one else stepped forward. No, I actually had some members uh, say that they would quit the committee if they oh. were appointed. Okay, good, good input, thank you. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor of approving uh, Dave Gulley as chairperson to the estate committee? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. All right, Amanda. This is a 28 day reading simply to add a fine amount to LM 10.2B, which is boats entering the community without a service seal. A little background on this. If you leave the community with your boat, you're supposed to get a white tag if you're not gonna a launcher boat and another body of water. That way community and Marine Patrol can see that you haven't had your boat in another body of water that could possibly contaminate our lake. This is a really common citation that is issued that people will come in um, and they will not stop to get a red or white tag. And there's no monetary value currently attached to it. So we're proposing to add a $150 fine to this rule. Thank you. Um, do I hear a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? So, so Mandy, you said this is a common citation that's given, but this is a citation without, uh, without a consequence? Uh, help, help us understand that better, please. So usually what we have to end up doing is cite them for, we have a, a fine amount that says any rule without a fine attached to it is $50. And we just don't feel that that really has enough, um, I guess, teeth to discourage people from entering without getting the seal. You say it's a, a common uh, citation. Can you give us some indication of how common it is? How many citations kind of a month on average, maybe? And a ballpark is fine. Uh, I, don't, I don't have an accurate number off the top of my head. Um, it's obviously a lot higher in the summertime. Um, but like just this last month, I think we had two at appeals. So in a non-busy boating month, there was two. And then the last question, why $150? We're also in the process of raising all of the fines. Um, to be eligible to even go into an IDR status, you have to have a balance of over $50. So we're trying to get away uh, from $50 citation that amount. Because um, it won't really trigger even the IDR process if you have a balance on your account. 
so we felt that if you're not going to obey community patrols instructions to stop and get the service seal, that $150 was a good amount. Any other discussion or are you considering a different amount and you want to amend? Bill, before we move on? Yep, I just saw. No other comments? I guess I don't, I'd like to, I'd like to, I, I know they selected 150, but if we go from zero to 150, I guess I'd maybe like to amend it to be 100 and see if that would be acceptable. All right, so to clarify, you would like to move that the fine amount be added at a hundred dollars versus a hundred and fifty dollars. If it was zero to begin with, yes. Is there a second on the amendment motion? Second. All right. Any discussion on that? All right. So all in favor of approving revised rule LM ten point two B boats entering without service sale and having the fine at one hundred dollars. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, it's a 28 day reading. Sorry. Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent. Motion carried. Thank you, Tim. That is a 28 day reading. So, members, any comments? You can email the board absolutely during that time. Um, going on to 8.9, Amanda. This is another really similar 28 day reading for GR 5.1 M, which is failure to comply. Um, we're also recommending, or staff is recommending to increase the fine, fine amount for members and guests that fail to comply with community or Marine patrol instruction. Currently the fine is only $50 and I can tell you some of our officers get, uh, go through the ringer when uh, certain members or guests decide not to comply with them. So we're proposing that the fine amount be raised to $250. Thank you, Amanda. Do I hear a motion on this? Motion. <laughs> Do we have a second? Everyone wants to share equally. Is there a second? We have a motion from Tim. So do we have a second? second yes. All right. Oh, it's just Bill got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I love it. Um, with that, let's have a discussion. So, so why so high? I mean, going from this is from fifty to two fifty is it seems like there's we're, we're trying to address address uh, a significant issue. And can you give us some background on that? Yeah. Uh, so I mean, as so, and staff, we feel that, you know, we're going to, or community patrol or Marine patrol are going to give a member or a guest who are not complying, whether that be, you know, causing a safety issue, or maybe they're belligerent at a park, at a holiday, or whatever the case may be, if they're not complying, um, being disrespectful, verbally harassing staff, uh, calling names, threatening to get physical, uh, we want our community patrol staff to feel that we back them when members are choosing to act that way. And so $250, I think is a high enough amount to discourage that type of behavior. And I'd like to remind everyone that members always have the ability to appeal any citation they're issued. So, uh, you know, the appeals committee would always have the ability to lower this or waive it if they felt that it was not just when it was issued. Any other comments from the board? Yes. Amanda, do you know how many of these um, citations have been issued in the past year or two or three? So for October, we didn't issue any citations for verbal abuse to staff. September, there were two. August, there were four. 
I could look back at these reports to provide a more accurate number on a yearly basis. Thank you. Any other comments from the board or yeah. would like to amend? No, I, I again, I, I think this is, I think the the amount is excessive. I'll, I'll just state that plainly. Um, I do understand um, how difficult the job of, of our community patrol is and they are disrespected immensely many times by many of our members. Um, I, I also understand from the member's standpoint that they feel there's sometimes, uh, you know, we have, we have some, some of these, uh, some of our guards who who are who are new and and uh, and they they aren't always current on on some of the things. So there's there's a balance in here. Uh, I, personally, I believe that going uh, to 250 is an excessive amount. Um, and so I would, uh, if if we if we to support this at all, I I would need to see it be a much lower amount uh, at maximum, say 100. Are you? Making a motion to amend to the fine, increasing the fine from 50 to 100. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I'll go ahead. I'll, one of the notes I wrote down, I said, should we consider going from 50 to 150? I, I felt going from 50 to 250 is a lot. One of the things that, uh, and I think community patrol should do because we do want to back them up and they should not be. Uh, verbally abused. That's a pet peeve that I have when people just do that to them so they can layer. So if you have someone where you can have your one failure to comply, that's whatever that number is, a hundred or $150 fine. Now there's verbal abuse. Now we add that on as well. So we can layer those things and that, you know, certainly anyone can appeal it, but it's going to let people know that you can't treat them disrespectfully. Um, but I think going that high amount, I would be fine with 100 or 150 as well. And, and I hear your point, and, and I, I think that's, I think we're on the right track. I'm thinking a little bit more about it. Given that the last one we just changed to 100, I guess I'd propose that we, we amend it to be $100 instead of 50. Second. Yeah, we still have discussion. Oh, we're still. Discussion. We're still yeah. Okay. So we already have rules in the, that if somebody were to verbally abuse somebody, a separate rule from this, right? Okay, I just wanted to verify that. So we could stack things on, we could do multiples. Okay, thank you. All right, so we do have a first and a second um, to change the fine from 50 to 100. Any other discussion on that? Nope. I'm gonna go ahead and call for a vote. All in favor, this is a 28 day read. So all in favor of approving the revised rule GR 5.1M, failure to comply the 28-day read to change the fine from 50 to $100. Say aye. 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 Any? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Thank you. And I'm still with Amanda. This is an approval for EC 5.3 uh, indemnification required for bringing horses into the equestrian center. Um, this was staff just wanting to update the day use rule and make it consistent with internal policy requirements. On the next page, you can see what's required. It's pretty common um, notice to our operations department, a bill of sale for the horse, proper vaccination records, proper liability coverage, et cetera. So staff is just recommending to approve rule EC 5.3. Thank you, Amanda. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. Discussion? No discussion. All right. All in favor of approving revised rule EC 5.3, indemnification required for bringing horse into facility, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent. Motion carried. Great, thank you. And Amanda? This is another approval for GR 3.8, which pertains to leases. 
Last month's staff recommended removing the requirement that member services review personal lease documentation for month to month leases. Um, this is something that uh, just doesn't, um, it's not really consistent with our tendency to refrain from looking at those types of documents that are personal between a tenant and a landlord. There's currently only one lease in the entire community that is month to month, so it's not really affecting many members. Um, tenants used to have to submit every single month proof of their rent payment to our member services staff before we could renew the lease for the next month. Uh, we're just proposing that the owner sign a new form, which is also already a part of the requirement, um, and then a renewal fee would be due after one year. So we are proposing that the board approve that rule, GR 3.8. All right, thank you, Amanda. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Discussion? So I guess I'm confused as to, if we only have one lease that this, this impacts, why are we going through, why, why do we need to create this rule for one instance? So it's just a rule that we're wanting to make consistent with our, our policies. Um, so I've worked in the department for a long time and we have new members who come in and they are interested in doing a month to month lease. We'll explain these requirements and they say, no, never mind. I don't want to deal with that. So I just want to bring this rule current and make it consistent with what we practice in other instances. So if, can you, I guess I'm trying to understand this a little bit better. If you are on a month to month, if you had a, let's say you had a year lease and the year is up and now you go month to month. Now you have to come in every month to get your card, POA card re renewed and so forth with the landlord. Is that, is that what this is addressing? Yes, which you already had to do in addition to providing proof that you paid your rent. So all I'm proposing is that we don't have to look at a personal rent payment because we don't look at any of those other personal documentations anyway. So I'm just trying to make it consistent um, you know, we don't review their personal lease. We have our own form. We don't care what their personal documentation says. So it doesn't really make sense to look at what monetary transaction is happening between them. Any other discussion or questions from the board? Just want to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call for the vote. Um, all in favor of approving revised rule GR 3.8, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Thank you. And still with Amanda. This is another staff recommendation to revise rule GR 4.2C, which is the pertaining to garage sales. Um, I'm really only proposing to make one change that we allow uh, this cycle of garage sales run per the fiscal year instead of the calendar year. Everything else in our department or in our association runs per the fiscal year and not the calendar year. So this will be a lot easier for staff. Um, and again, for consistency purposes. So just recommending that the board approve GR 4.2C. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? Yeah, I have a, a comment. So <clears throat> how big of a, an issue is this, Amanda? Uh, it's difficult to train staff to, remem to remember that. Boats, payments, golf carts, all these other things expire at the end of the fiscal year. And then they have to remember that garage sales expire at the end of the calendar year. So again, just for consistency purposes and training purposes, I think it's going to help the member services department specifically when it comes to training. It's a little bit easier for staff to remember. Okay. My, my only comment is most residents don't know what the fiscal year is, let alone know what a fiscal what a fiscal year is in a lot of cases and so they it, it could create some confusion with among residents but I don't think it's that bad, that big a deal um I understand your point thanks 
Well, and I think the good news is the community garage sale doesn't count against their garage sale signs either. So they just get to participate in that for someone who likes to have garage sales. Yeah, and I would say the tracking of the number of garage sales is more internal anyway. I would say most members don't even know that they're allowed to have three or they're not allowed to have three, four or five. So it's it's really just more of an int internal consistency training issue. Any other questions or comments for move to a vote? All right, all in favor of Let me turn my page back. All in favor of approving revised rule GR 4.2, maximum number of permits going to fiscal year, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Thank you. And now, Amanda, your last one. This is another approval from last month's meeting uh, to revise rule PT 1.4, which has to do with removing the speed limit of five miles per hour at the pump track. Staff recommended to remove the speed limit altogether. We're recommending that the board approve PT 1.4 as attached. Great, thank you for that. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, any discussion on this? No, for all good, all in favor of re approving revised rule PT 1.4, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're in favor, one absent, motion carried. All right, thank you, Amanda. We're gonna move on to association reports, Eric. Good evening, thank you for coming. Uh, as usual, I would like to point everybody to our agenda that we hand out when you will come in the room and it's also available online. Um, our, our open session agenda is always packed full of staff reports from all our various departments. And um, I urge everyone to read them. They put a lot of effort every month into um, writing these reports. And so um, I wanna highlight a few of them as I usually do. Uh, activities and communication have been very busy, working hard on all the holiday events the tree lighting, the home tour, the toy drive and um, golf cart parade. Um, that was a, all of those are great events this year as they always are. Um, communications and activities is very busy promoting and putting those events on and we appreciate them very much. Um, in your agenda is a communications report which is always an outstanding report. It's three or four color pages of um, statistics and everything that that department is doing and David and Tiffany do a fantastic job um, in harmony. Uh, we appreciate all of them and uh, you'll also find the community patrol and marine patrol reports in there, uh, planning and compliance report and in the planning and compliance report this month you'll see that uh, Cheryl sitting over here has uh, is tracking 1265 open permits um, at the present time. And this month, the ACC committee, uh, Chairman John sitting over there, uh, had a record of 294 items reviewed by the ACC committee in one month. And so um, hardest working committee we have, and we appreciate them very much, all three of you and our liaison. So uh, thank you guys. And in the operations um, report, there's always a ton of stuff in there. And uh, this month, just a few things the operations department is working on besides helping set up all of these um, holiday events and all the other community events. Um, uh, just 13 things the operations department is doing this month is uh, resurfacing the basketball courts, uh, the Canyon Lake Drive median at the main gate. Steve's been working on that RFP and the bids and brought that to the board. Uh, the board just approved it. We're very excited. That's a project that um, we're going to go to work on and will make a, a huge difference when you come into our main gate. Super excited about that. Uh, they're also working on the equestrian center arena and equestrian center stalls and barn rain gutters, um, replacing a dock at Harrelson Park, replacing a dock at Holiday Harbor. Uh, EVMWD has approved those projects. Um, they're working on uh, magnolia room improvements. We're going to be painting and uh, countertops and some cabinets in that room uh, downstairs at the country club. Uh, mailboxes and lighting, that project is ongoing. Um, 
probably at about 85% now on that project, um, replacing mailbox slabs and making them more accessible and adding solar lighting. So that's moving along. Uh, pickleball court additions, the city has issued the permit for that project and Steve will be putting an RFP out. Um, I did, uh, Chuck left already, but I want everyone to know that um, that project, if when we get bids back and if the board approves that project, that project will not be taking up any boat and trailer parking um, spaces. Uh, it will be in the area at the bottom of the stairs near the existing pickleball courts and it won't be taking up any boat and trailer parking spaces. So uh, we'll be putting that out to bid pretty soon and uh, probably bring it to the board and we have a bid date yet. No. So it'd be January, February. We'll bring it to the board. Uh, the solar project is moving along. All the permits have been approved and uh, install should start sometime in January. The vacation park project, the playground and exercise equipment are still expected to arrive later this month. If that happens, we'll get them installed. And when they are installed, we'll have a ribbon cutting and a grand opening for that park. And then uh, the last two items that um, Steve and I have been working on is uh, a remodel here at the uh, Lighthouse restaurant and bar. Very excited about that. We had a job walk week ago and we have an outstanding response with um, a lot of general contractors and subcontractors showed up and um, a lot of people interested in bidding this project. We, uh, at the same time, we had a job walk for the outdoor project, which is a patio and event space out here on the lawn and um, excited to get those bids. Right now, the bid date for that project is December 21st. Um, it may slip a little bit if we have to put out an addendum, but right now my plan is to get bids December 21st, go through them the last week of the year, and um, hopefully bring those bids to the board in um, our January board meeting. If we do have to slip the bid date because of an addendum or some late information from the architects and designers, then it would go into the next month. But as of right now, we're still on track for a bids December 21st. And uh, we're excited about all these things and um, just wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Now we're gonna move on to board comments. Who would like to start? Sure. Um, lots of things going on this last month and, and a lot of things. I'd, I'd like to uh, really thank the city of Kenya Lake for the, and the Family Matters Club for the Winter Wonderland and Tree Lighting Ceremony. It was just a beautiful, awesome event to see how many families were out there enjoying. That was amazing. Um, Carrie Pratt and her team and Steve Snyder's team at Operations for their hard work for the golf cart parade. I mean, those two events back to back, there were hundreds and hundreds of people at each of those events and watching the parade was amazing. Uh, also two events the same day. Um, the holiday home tour, and at the same time that was going was a golf cart poker run, which raised over $10,000 for Michelle's place and four local charities in our community. So it was a really good day. It was a lot of fun. And uh, as always, I want to thank my Planning and Compliance and ACC Committee for the hard work and commitment they have to our community. Thank you. Oh, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I won't see you again until next year. Greg, you want to go next or Bill? Uh, every Friday evening, uh, after an exhausting week in retirement, I look forward to getting the uh, community newsletter via email. And I've been commenting to people recently that uh, this newsletter is getting better and better all the time. And so thanks to the communications department for putting that together and making it better. If you want to know what's going on in this community, you should, if you don't already, subscribe to this newsletter because it's, it's chock full of information. It's funny. I saw, a, a, I believe I saw a Facebook post that someone put up that said, well, when does the golf cart parade start and where? Well, if you got the newsletter, you'd know all, all about that and you wouldn't be posting something silly like that. So it's a great, great thing. Again, if you don't uh, subscribe to it, you can do it from your easy chair and it's a, it's a great way to keep up on the community. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah, I concur. You know, December is a great time to be in Canyon Lake. Uh, there's a lot going on. I do want to uh, thank the POA staff uh, 
and activities in particular um, for, for the tree lighting ceremony, for instance, for those of you who aren't here, that we had a climb, rock climbing wall, we had bouncing houses, we had, we had a petting zoo, uh, we, had, we had a little um, Ferris wheel, and it was all provided free to residents, which is, which is pretty awesome. And I know the kids had a lot of fun. So the Santa that they brought was, I mean, he looked, he, I think he was the real thing. I asked him, I sat on his lap and asked for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was outstanding <clears throat> um but that the 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 toy driving parade as everyone else has mentioned again great job and there's and there's a lot of good things coming up this weekend boat parade right that's something we all look very forward to um the ski club uh breakfast with santa the Coralers concert again great time to be here uh, one of the great things about canyon lake is our community and it's things like this and again our our, our staff doesn't get enough uh, credit for how much planning and time it takes so uh, Lynn, please please uh, thank everyone for for all their hard work um you know, on a personal note, this is a, you know, it's a kind of a very special time of year, right, for not only the activities here. I went to happen to go to dinner with my wife last night, and as we were walking to the restaurant, we, there was a, a, a young woman <clears throat> sitting out there who was, who was deaf, uh, had a dog, and she didn't have any money, uh, right? And so she, and she, she said, can you help? Can, she, <clears throat> she communicated with me enough to say, can you give me some, some money so I can feed my dog, um, which broke my heart, right? It was, it was a hard hard thing to see. So we, we bought her dinner, we bought, we bought her dog dinner and so forth. My, my only comment here is, you know, there's a lot of people who are needy in our community. Um, let's remember this time here, be, be kind to your neighbors and, you know, help each other. So with that, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, Bill. Um, I love going last because you guys have covered most of it, but I just want to thank our staff. They are tremendous. Um, every single level of staff. Canyon Lake couldn't do what it does without our staff. And that goes all the way to um, sort of one of the most important people. There's people who are taking our trash and cleaning the parks after we leave a mess. I mean, everything is pristine the next day and it's fantastic. I know we talk about ACC is the hardest working group. So I'm just going to call the TWT the strongest working group because these folks are amazing. And for those who golf, and I'm up to four times this year, so I'm excited about that. Uh, there was a massive oak tree that fell a few weeks ago. It's gone. We took care of that last week. And what I find particularly amazing, and, and while the gentlemen are lovely telling me things are too heavy and, you know, we left and we're very careful in doing what we need to do. And then we were bringing stuff back and I lifted up the chainsaw and the chainsaw they were using, thanks to operations, letting us borrow it because it was a massive oak tree was so heavy. And they were working that chainsaw for over an hour and a half, cutting this big tree down. And one of the gentlemen doing it was probably in his eighties, but I'm not going to say that I'll maybe seventies, but probably in his eighties crushing it. So I love you guys, but they are the strongest working group and they do it because uh, they love our community. They love the golf course, but they love the community and whatever they can do to help lower the subsidy for our amazing golf course is, is why they do it. Their heart's in it for everyone. So I just want to thank them for that. They're both the best because one is a committee and one is a group. Well, there you go. There you go. Okay. Thank you. I love it. Are the strongest so um, I just want to let everyone know that at the senior center they're going to be having a new year's eve party it's 42 dollars a person they're going to have food a champagne toast and a dj tickets are still available so if you're looking to do something local it's a great place to go and have camaraderie um, I already mentioned the boat parades coming up there's still a lot of lake left to be filled for boats that are decorated. So just know that the boat parade is as great as the members make it by participating in it. So we'd love to have more boats in it. Uh, the other little shout out I want to give, and you guys already covered everything again. So if I missed anything, I apologize. But Tiffany Grant and activities at the golf cart parade at the very beginning, there is uh, a golf cart that had a flat tire and they needed help tilting the golf cart as we were walking by. And there was a call, hey, are there, is there any strong people that can help? So my husband and I walk over and I see Tiffany. And if you don't know her, she is a power lifter, competitive power lifter. And I saw her and although workers comp ran through my brain, I'm like, oh, Tiffany, can you help? And 
you know, there were four or five of us and thank God the golf cart didn't tip over because we just lifted it up while they changed the tire. But talk about amazing staff, uh, just absolutely fantastic. And again, hopefully there's no workers' comp claim on that because she knows what to do. So with that, I'm going to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, a safe and happy new year. I think we're going to take a little break before we go into, we have um, ACC appeals. So we're going to take us five minutes or do you want a 10 minute break forward? Five minutes, good. We'll take a short five minute break and then we'll come back. Thank you.
ahead and start. <clears throat> These are our, um, appeals, architectural appeals. First on our list is Paul Herbert. All right. Good evening. So the Herbers are here to uh, appeal the ACC denial for a patio cover in the side setback. If we can go ahead and go to exhibit one, um, it'll show you what we're talking about. The inspectors noticed that uh, there was a patio cover that was installed in the side setback. And so a letter was sent asking and requesting for an application. Uh, because this is a CCNR violation, the committee is unable to approve it. So what happened is, is that um, the support posts are in the set setback itself and all structures are to be five feet away from the setbacks. Um, and then patio cover it from the look of it, um, the one that you can see right in front of you right now in that picture, it does appear as if there is a, a chance that it could, when raining, it could drain into the neighbor's property. Um, that's not verified and it's not part of the uh, real issue here. The real issue is that it's in the setback. And so I'm gonna give an opportunity for Mr. Is your Mr. Herbert. Okay, give you an opportunity to go ahead and state your appeals. All right, thank you. Is there any questions from the board? I'm just curious, do you have a city permit for that? Because I know the city is 
real sticklers on that. So you did not, or you did go to the city? Okay, so. All right, any other questions? You went to the POA office after you got the violation notice though, right? So I think what he's referring to is the solar permit, the solar permit. So our application and plans have to match. And so if you are putting up a patio cover, it would not have been done over the counter. All of our solar permits are done over the counter same day, issued the same day. So that's not something staff would have been able to do. And so when the inspectors didn't notice it and sent that secondary letter out to you, um, when they talk about colors, it's talking about the mounting brackets. It's talking about the cords that come down. They have to match the house. So you can't see them physically. Like it's a, a black or a gray. They would like it to match the house. That's what the reference is for the colors. So I think there was a miscommunication, definitely. Um, unfortunately, it's the member's responsibility to ensure that they, you know they get permits through everything. And I would say you would need to get a permit because it is to it is attached to the house. You should get a permit with the city as well. Are, are there any alternatives or options that the homeowner may have to remediate it? Well, the option that we suggested was that uh, the that it meet the CCNR requirements. The uh, posts have to be five feet from the property line. And the eaves have to be two and a half feet from the property line. Uh, this particular from the side of the house, if you could, uh, could you go back to the previous picture? So in the side of the house right here to the property line out here is 12 feet and the cover is actually 12 feet long. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, my, my, my laser won't sign on, shine on that. So the side of the house there, um, to the property line is 12 feet and the cover is listed as 12 by 39. So it definitely is in the side setback. Uh, so on the, what he mentioned about the, uh, when you put in for a permit, you receive a letter with the permit and the letter states on it that the, you know, what is approved. So the solar panels, like Cheryl said, are handled separately by state law, and uh, and uh, the so unfortunately, these aluminum wood patio covers require um, uh, a a variance. Unfortunately, because of previous votes we've had to try and get this approved as part of our as part of an authorized roofing material. Uh, the problem is that um, this also violates, which I probably shouldn't mention, but it violates the city code, which is also five feet away from the property line. It's a fire hazard. The wood, as we know, a few years ago was, a, or the aluminum patio cover was a serious problem up in the storage area now with the fire. And it just, it started out as just a little fire grew to the side of the aluminum side of the uh, RV and went up to the roof, which was a aluminum wood patio cover. So it's kind if of a I, serious problem. If I may, I don't know um, design wise, if there is a way that the post, because the, the largest of the issue is the post where they're placed. If they can be set five feet back, and then if there is a way, um, I don't know how far of the distance it looks as if the edge of the patio cover portion is right at the property line. Even though you have uh, rain gutters, we're only supposed to be, I think we, it's three and three, 
two and a half feet away. So um, there might be a way to get around it um, by putting some sort of a support post and then putting the post back five feet to where it, 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 it goes five feet from the property line. I don't know if that's possible, but that would be the only way to resolve this. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say before. If you just went, pulled a permit, showed it five feet back with a two and a half foot overhang, you would be within the requirements. You'd still have enough room to park your golf cart under there. Unfortunately, you just gotta move the support post and cut these back two and a half feet, which is really not as bad as ripping the whole thing out. Yeah, it would be really hard to do that because those posts are 10 feet off the wall and the golf cart has maybe a foot and a half on either side. So if we took it in to be five feet off the property line, I would not have enough room to be able to really put hardly anything under there. I'd have, you know, maybe six feet of space at most. Um, and yeah, I just, so like I say, I've gone around, I have pictures of several other properties that are literally exactly the same where their patio cover goes to the edge of the property line. Everything's not in accordance to the rules you guys are saying, but there's several properties that have that. I'm not sure how they got around it, but we were really hoping to be able to find out how, because it's, I mean, it's there, it's something that we gotta figure out, but there's other properties that have it. And it's like, oh, these people can have it, but these people can't, that's kind of hard. And we're new to the community. We love it in here. We have young kids. We're very active in everything, but it's kind of like, man, some people get to do things and others don't to their house. And that's just kind of where we're at, so. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, do I hear a motion from the board? Motion to uphold the ACC committee suggestion. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, all in favor of upholding the ACC recommendation to denial the patio cover inside setback, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Thank you, guys. All right, next we have Richard Gonzalez. Richard Gonzalez has postponed until January, so we're tabling it. Okay, need a motion to table, please. Motion to table. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all. Aye. 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 Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Motion to table, Woodhouse. Second. All in favor of tabling Jason Woodhouse, say aye. 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 Four in favor, one absent, motion carried. Ivan, is it Moran? Moran. Okay, for our second and last appeal for the evening, we have the Morans who are now um, appealing the ACC denial for dock, ramp, canopy, boat lift, toy rack, and swim bench. So what I would like to state is the committee is not opposed to having them, they're opposed to the size that has been um, proposed by the Morans. So the proposed plan shows the dock length is 35 feet from the tip of the fingers to the back of the header. The opening of the dock is measured at 11 foot opening and an eight foot and a six foot finger, totaling 25 feet wide and 35 feet long with a 23 foot ramp, which is considered too large for the area. Below are the PC rules for general design description for docks. However, depending on the location, some docks can be approved with smaller and larger designs. In coves, the committee will not approve an oversight dock due to navigation, size of docks within the cove and neighboring properties. This application and plan has been reviewed twice in September and also in October. 
The final decision stated that the ramp is fixed to the platform, not adjustable as indicated, and the maximum length of the slip is to be 22 feet. The header is too large and the existing dock and the new dock plan is out in the navigational area of the cove. The plan shows steps, but it currently has a concrete pier. Boat lifts are not to go out any farther than the end of the dock. That is a comment and it is a part of the conditions that the committee does put on there. The committee states that the lift should not be, this, the committee states that the, that the, I'm sorry, the committee states that the lift should set with the hinge toward the front of the slip to avoid the navigational problems. And the other part I would like to mention here is that because it's in a cove, we require all cove proposals to have a cove meeting in order for the neighboring properties to be able to um, see what's going on and make suggestions should there be any issues with the plan that's current. So at this present time, I'm going to go ahead and let the Morans or Rich Matthews, who is their contractor, to go ahead and state their appeals. Uh, good evening. Yeah, my name is Rich Matthews. I own Ramco Docks. And uh, <clears throat> our main issue on this uh, project is the owner, Ivan Moran, they want to have a slip that is uh, 24 feet in depth, 24 or 25. The problem with a 22 foot depth slip is that uh, Ivan's boat and many, many of the newer boats on Canyon Lake uh, that are allowed to have a 21 and a half foot chassis, uh, all of those boats, pontoon boats, ski boats, a pontoon boat would have a outdrive typically that extends three to five feet beyond the chassis. That makes the length of that boat 21 and a half plus three or four is more like 24, 25 feet in length. And if you're putting that length of a boat in a 22 foot slip, it's going to stick out a lot. It would stick out, if it wasn't, is not on a lift, it's still gonna stick out maybe two, three feet or so. If it's on a lift, all lifts pivot backwards, the, uh, it would be stick out maybe several feet more. I have uh, pictures of, the, I don't know if you can see this, I can hand these out, but these are docks that have a shorter slip with a full-size pontoon boat sticking out four or five feet beyond the legs of the dock. So uh, if uh, a boat is, uh, the apparatus of the boat, the motor, et cetera, is sticking out uh, three, four or five feet beyond the legs of the dock, that's a hazard. That's a navigational hazard. It's a danger to somebody driving a boat by there. Maybe it's in the evening or dark or whatever, could be having their arm sticking out arm hits the blade of a, of a dock that's just sitting there not running or whatever, it is uh, going to be, uh, there's injuries, there's damage or whatever. And it makes uh, so little sense that if we're allowing a 21 and a half foot boat, which is always like 24, 25 feet, uh, and if you're trying to confine that in a 22 foot slip, it's gonna stick out. Now, if you look at other parts of your uh, rules where you say that a lift cannot extend anything beyond the legs of the dock, why? Because that's, I've been told, well, that's a hazard. So uh, a lift that might stick out a foot or two beyond the legs of the dock, that's a hazard. But an outboard motor sticking out five feet out beyond is not a hazard. So I'd like somebody to, I, I'm not understanding that. So I'd like some explanation of why it's a hazard or it's unacceptable to have the, the, you know, the tanks of the lift sticking out beyond the, 20, the, the, the legs of the uh, slip. Why is it then a, uh, not a hazard, not a problem, not an issue to have a pontoon boat or a ski boat that's sticking out two, three, four, five feet beyond the legs of the dock? So what I'm seeing is something that just is illogical. Now let's look at a couple other things. I've been doing boat uh, docks in Canyon Lake, beautiful docks in Canyon Lake for almost nine years. I'd say the majority, maybe I didn't do an actual count, probably 60 to 70% of all the docks that I've put in 
have anywhere from 23 to 25 foot deep slips. And it was, it was fine. Those were all approved. They're all installed over nine years. And suddenly now, apparently, as I understand it, maybe I'm wrong, but I understand it, that the committee have some new people on the committee and they say, oh, well, the guidelines say 22 feet. So we can't, we absolutely can't allow anything beyond 22 feet because that's the guideline. Well, if you look at the definition of a guideline, a guideline is not an absolute rule. It's just like a guitar. All right, is there, um, I'm just gonna have you pause there. So we're not here to question the rules that are in place um, and whether or not they were in place nine years ago, things are certainly different within coves versus on the main lake or not in a cove. I just wanted to, See if you had anything that you wanted to say, or we can start having the board ask questions. Well, we do need that slip to be 25 foot, you know, in order for the boat to cover it and not sticking out. That's 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 the main concern. Okay. If, if, I, I, if, I may. if, if, if the concern is that it, the whole thing is sticking out too far, it actually isn't. Uh, maybe a six inches or foot further out into the causeway than the neighbor dock on the right. Now, Ivan has said that they would be they would be agreeable to maybe shortening the depth of the header. It's now 10 feet, maybe cut a foot or two off of that. We could make the ramp. I guess you allow, the shortest ramp you allow is 20 feet. Well, right now it's 23. Take a foot off of that, foot or two off of that. So we could do some of those things. Instead of shortening that slip that is gonna be uh, just an unacceptable, not a good product. Uh, let's shorten a couple of the things that they they say would be acceptable, and then they can still have their twenty five. All right, start. I'm going to see if there are any questions from the board. Yes, it, it looks to me by looking at the pictures that there are <clears throat> there are multiple options. Thank you. Uh, there, there, we have multiple options here that could still accommodate a, a larger dock. If he was if he was to I mean that that ramp looks very long. Is it possible to to cut the ramp back by by three or five feet to to then 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 it doesn't stick out as far? Is that a Any, possible? Anything option? is possible. If we can look at this picture here, you can see where they're at. the The highlighted property is the property in question. They are in what we call the neck of the cove. It's already real strict with the amount of uh, movement that can go in there. So coves are one of the most difficult ones. So yes, it, anything can be looked at, but and the committee basically is stating that the length of the dock to be no more than 22. If they wanna shorten the header, that's fine. I'm 28, I'm sorry, 28. And then, the, and then so he can actually shorten up the ramp by two, to 20, absolutely. But this current plan, the committee believes, is is just too oversized. Normally, we get in tight coats. It's like four or a six foot header max, twenty two foot fingers max, twenty foot ramp max. So you know he's got a ten foot header, a twenty five foot ramp, a twenty five foot finger. Well, the header now is how big? Ten feet. Ten feet. And what is the proposed header? Six feet is what we like. This see. way, okay. That's that's the horizontal amount, okay. But if he wants a bigger slip, then he should reduce the header. But also I wanna point out that the ramp length, when we went and measured for 1372, we found that if ramp was not adjustable, it's gonna be fixed. And that uh, 20 feet in length of ramp would be perfect for him. So that make it two feet less than what he's asking for. The total, um, two, three feet. Okay, so the um, the if you can clearly see on there how the dock uh, sticks out compared to the other docks, this is the existing dock. Okay, so that his dock that he wants to put out there is actually gonna go 10 feet further into the cove. And that's kind of where, we, why we associated a problem with this. But that's what he said. That's what I'm saying. That's the old dock. So the new dock will be 10 feet out further than what the existing is.
Okay, so if I may say, we're not here to design a new dock. That's Correct. not what the board Correct. is here for. I, and I think the best thing to do is for the board to make a decision based off of you know what's going on. Right. Um, and then maybe we can have them come back to the committee. All right. So it's good to know that it hasn't been built yet. This is being proposed. Goodness, that's wonderful. I make a. And, and I appreciate that there are people who don't, and then they have to start all over again and tear it up. So I appreciate that we're here now. Um, with that, I'm going to ask if there's a motion. Motion to accept planning and compliance to ACC's recommendation. Do I hear a second? Second. That doesn't happen here. You can bring that to ACC, but there's a motion and a second. Is there a second? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call for a vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 So, Any opposed? Four in favor, one absent. Motion carried. What, and what that means is this design, as designed, isn't going to is going to meet that. But I think I think there are options that you can work to come up with a design that will that will not demonstrate for that. And that's what we need you. We need you to come back with another. We need you to go back to the ACC with a plan to to with with a. One that will not, not stick out further, basically. It's not us. Again, you, you have, yeah, the ACC can tell you what might be acceptable, but, but you have to go to them with, with an, all we can do is, is, is vote on current plans. All right, with that, I'm going to ask, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right, motion, meeting adjourned.